Tere, head vaatajad! Tänasesse digitarga saatesse olen kutsunud rääkima futuroloogi Ben Hammersley. Räägime natuke tehnoloogiast, tulevikust ja sellest, kus pärineb sõna podcast. Aga ilma pikema tutvustuseta, hello Ben! Hey! So, you're here in Estonia. What's the first impression? <laughs> it's not cold enough. It's raining and it's January. What's going on? Yeah, I think Greta Thunberg will have a few words with you. What's going, what's going on right now in the world? But uh, you have an interesting job, a futurist. Now, what does a futurist do? And do you have anything in common with historians? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so in general, my job is to help people, companies, individuals, governments, large organizations to think about the future. I mean, that's the original idea of a futurist, is somebody who helps you plan for the next few years. But over the past, over the past four or five years, I think what I've realized with my company and the work that I do is that the future is, uh, the nature of the future has changed that in the past we used to think, uh, we used to talk about the future as if it was one place and it was going to happen in one time. You know, back in the last century, we had a very cliched idea of what the future would be. And the future was going to arrive sometime around 2020 and we would have flying cars and there'll be lots of neon and it would sort of look like Tokyo or it would look like Blade Runner. And the future would be the same everywhere. And what we've realized is that the future is different in, in everywhere you go. And that my role really isn't so much to help people think about the future, but it's to help people think about the present. Because most of my clients, and these are very senior executives or senior politicians, um, their problem isn't thinking about the future, their problem is understanding today. That in the past 10 years, the world has changed so quickly and, so, and has become so strange that they don't understand today, never mind tomorrow. I, But, I want to interrupt you for one mm -hmm. second. What do you mean by strange? Well, if you imagine yourself as being somebody um, in their, say, mid-60s, mm -hmm. uh, let's imagine you're a, the CEO, you're an American CEO of a, of a bank or a, or a large multinational you probably went to a university, maybe did an MBA 40 years ago. And at that time, the world was, had been very, very set in its structure. It was you know, the Cold War, it was East versus West, and the, the structures of the world were, had been set for quite a long time. And the sort of shape of the world, the way that everything works, the politics, the power dynamics, the the nature of technology was, it would change, but it wouldn't change very much over those decades. What's happened in the past 10 years is that everything has changed completely and has become completely different to the, the model that people have in their head of how the world works, the conceptual model they have in their head. And so it's not strange in that it's surreal or something like that. It's just that the world is different to the way that most people, or certainly most people in power, who are my sort of client, that most people imagine the world is. So there's a difference between the two. And so to answer your first question about what's, you know, are there any connections between me and, and historians, I think when we look at history, a lot of the time we're using history as a way of examining today. Exactly. And as a futurist, I use ideas about the future as a way of examining today as well in order to help my clients understand the world they're living in so they can then build a future, but not necessarily the same future as we've been telling ourselves. You said that in the last 10 years, a lot has changed. Mm. Could you name out about two or three technologies or inventions that, that have changed the whole dynamics? Uh, would you say it's a, it's a social media algorithm, algorithms or would you say it's something entirely else? 
I, I think these, these things are, are quite obvious. If you think back maybe 15 years ago, mm -hmm. 15 years ago, we didn't have the iPhone, we didn't have Facebook, we didn't have YouTube, we didn't have Twitter, we didn't have Snapchat, we didn't have Instagram, we didn't have e-commerce in most places, we didn't have uh, you know, the Estonian e-residency system, we didn't have mobile internet in China, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? The, the systems and the technologies that everybody uses on a day-to-day -day basis, either they use it themselves or they're part of a world which is using it a lot, all of those systems are, are new from the past 10, 10 or 15 years. And whether we're talking about social media, whether we're talking about algorithmically um, defined advertising, whether we're talking about just the ability to do things through your phone, all of those in individual in innovations has, has radically changed the world. And this isn't necessarily obvious to people because the human mind is very curious in that as soon as something exists and becomes useful, it then becomes boring and it becomes part of your daily life. And we forget what life was like without it. And also, of course, we have a whole, maybe two generations now of people who don't remember the world before the smartphone and certainly don't remember the world before the internet. Mm -hmm. And so we don't, we don't notice that how strange this world is. But the people who do notice and the things that do notice are the systems and the people who grew up before these technologies. So one of the big challenges we have today is that our institutions, our governments, our corporations, our education system, and so on, generally around the world, came into existence and became mature in a time before the smartphone, before the social media network, before all of these things. And so there's always this tension between, uh, for example, American democracy, as an example, and social media. The two don't really work together very well because one was invented long before the other one was invented. Mm -hmm. And because half of the country doesn't remember a time when social media didn't exist, we don't notice that these two things don't quite work together. Mm -hmm. So it's, there's always this tension. Mm -hmm. You mentioned social media many times right now. Um, I don't know, maybe I've noticed the phenom phenomenon, so to say, that uh, young people, especially even here in Estonia, they want to become more often influencers and they want to and they are pretty good at editing videos they're pretty good at knowing what the audience wants are they on the right path of i don't know finding a future job or should they actually obtain more skills to be more re relevant in 10 years time so that's a very hard question because we really don't know what the world will be like in 10 years' time. I don't know if you know about three years' time. Well, exactly. Yeah. And, and that's, that's uh, a new situation as well. If you imagine uh, last century, sort of the baby boomer generation, traditionally around the world, or certainly around um, Western Europe and North America, which is the areas I know the best, Baby boomers would go into the world, they would go to college, they would leave college, they would go into a job, and they would expect to be in that career for the rest of their lives. Probably work for the same company for the rest of their lives. And then they would retire and do some gardening and then they would die, right? That would be it. And our society is really, uh, especially in the West, the society is based around those sorts of milestones in life, right? Um, graduating, getting a job, starting a career, getting, like, a wife. getting a wife, getting a mortgage, getting a house, having children, getting a dog, yeah. getting a boring car, just moving your way through that sort of trajectory. And that worked very well for maybe 40 or 50 years. Today, though, all of that has gone away. It's gone away for 
economic reasons, it's gone away for demographic reasons, it's gone away because of the pace of change of technology means that whole industries have gone away and new industries are growing and we really don't know what the world will be like, never mind things like climate change and mm -hmm. geopolitics and all of that. So we never know what the world's going to be like in three years time or five year time or ten years time. And so asking young people today to make decisions about what skills they could choose for a hypothetical future in 10 years time, I think is, is kind of rude, actually. It's sort of in bad taste, and especially because that, that question is being asked by, by a generation who are responsible for making the world unpredictable in the first place. You know, So I think it's a difficult question, but you then actually, I think it's interesting to think about why do younger generations want to concentrate on being social media influencers, right, rather than um, learning something else. And I think it comes down to uh, power, which is that today in an economy which is so precarious, in a world which is so unpredictable, when we have things like runaway climate change and, and all of the big macro problems, It's not surprising that, given the choice, a young person who, who really has nothing else to grab hold of will take something which is definitely theirs, you know, TikTok, for example, mm -hmm. right? And decide that that is the place that they're going to concentrate their energy on because that's the one place that they can be powerful in. Mm -hmm. Right. If you can't get an employer to give you a full-time job, hell, even an inter internship. Or, yes, yeah. exactly, or an internship, or anything like that. If you if you can't enact change politically, if you can't, um, you know, if you can't save money, if you certainly can't afford a house, which is what your your parents have been telling you you should be doing, and all of these things. Instead, if you but but you find that instead. With, a, with your own skill and your own effort and your own abilities, you can become very popular on Instagram. And which are you going to do? Well, you're going to do the Instagram thing, or you're going to do TikTok or Twitter or whatever, right? And so it's not, it's not, un, it's not irrational. It's not, a, it's not necessarily a bad thing at all. It actually makes a lot of sense considering the alternatives, which is to do what teenagers did when I was a teenager, which is, I don't know, steal things and go skateboarding. You know, it's, it's, it's perhaps, I think, perhaps more interesting and more um, sophisticated than just hanging around the shops and drinking cheap cider.